Picture this. It's a typical Wednesday night, 2 a.m. You just finished a marathon viewing of all the Lord of the Rings extended edition Blu-ray DVDs. For the 300th time, you need to hop on your computer to double check some fan theories about how Gandalf was trying to tell the Fellowship to use the Eagles to get to Mordor. Or how the story as a whole is just a huge analog for World War II. And then your eyes start hurting because the screen is just too darn bright. We've all been there. Some people are just a little more sensitive to screen brightness or have trouble reading text on certain background color palettes, and that's where dark mode comes in. Giving the viewer the option to toggle a dark mode ensures that you have a lot more accessibility and allows the viewer to have more control over their online experience. I'll show you how I built a custom dark and light mode toggle for this Lord of the Rings landing page. I did it all in Webflow, so come along this journey with us, but remember, it's a dangerous business, Frodo. Going out your door, you step onto the road, and if you don't keep your feet, there's no knowing where you might be swept off to. So here's the finished website in Webflow. We've got the little nav bar right up here. It's just got two little links. About section brings you right to the about, and cast brings you right down to the cast. We've got all of our beautiful cast members. When you hover over it, it turns into the character. Now also in the nav bar here, I've got a little custom toggle. And when you click this, woohoo, turns into dark mode. So now we've got the big Mordor background. We'll see here that our background of the body goes to a darker gray color and the text becomes white. So it's a little more readable on top of those backgrounds. And when you click it again, it'll switch right back to the light mode. And then the other fellowship background of the Great River appears at the top. Let's jump right in. So here's the site here. First thing we wanna do is add the toggle link to the top. So let's make sure we're in our nav bar. I'm gonna go down here. We've got the nav menu with the two links. Inside the nav menu, I'm gonna add a div. And I'm just gonna name this toggle div. I'm gonna give it a width of 100 pixels. That way we have some space to work with. Inside the toggle div, I'm gonna add another div block. This one will be called toggle track. Let's give it a width of 80% of its parent. And we'll make the height 60%. That way it just kind of lives inside here. I'm also gonna give it a background color so we can see what we're working with. Just give it a light gray color, there we go. And if we go to the toggle div container that we made, let's just make that flex center here so that way it lives in the middle. And now our toggle track, let's also give it a radius of about 20 pixels. That way it gives it that nice oval. Then you'll see that this will be the slider that it lives on. So we've got our toggle div, our toggle track, and now we're gonna add one more div inside of our toggle track. This will be the actual button itself. Let's call this toggle switch. So now we have our toggle switch. Let's give it a height and a width of 40 pixels because we're gonna try to make a circular shape. And anytime you make a circle kind of shape, you wanna make sure the height and the width are the same. So that way when you give it a radius, which we're about to do, it'll curve nicely. So let's give it about a 62 pixel radius. And see, it lives right in here. And you'll see now by default, it aligns on the left side of the toggle track. And it's a nice little white circle. I can give it a Let's give it a little linear gradient background. Maybe something like white there, but then maybe a deeper white for the second color. Just to give it a little bit of dimension. Let's go to our toggle track. I'm gonna give it a hover state as well. Just a little box shadow to bring it to life even more. Let's do one, seven, then negative two for the size. And then make sure toggle track in its base state, we've got a cursor pointer here. And transition will just be all properties ease in over 200 milliseconds. And that way, when we preview this, hover that, and look, we've already got our, our little toggle here. Doesn't do anything when we click it yet, but it looks nice. Next thing we have to do is just make the other background. So everything here, we're just gonna change the class and styling of things when we click on the toggle, but everything's already made basically, right? We're just changing the styling. The only thing we have to make is the other background to live here. So we can have the Mordor background appear like it does here when we click this, right? So it's just gonna live right behind the other hero background. So we can just go to our hero section and you'll see here I have one section that holds the whole thing. It's ADVH and the logo lives right on top by itself, the Lord of the Rings. And then behind it, there's a div. And this div is absolutely positioned over the whole width of the section. So technically the section is just a container for this and this background image of the Great River is just living there. So what I can do is go add another div block that'll just be the same sort of dimensions as this Great River picture. 
So it's going to be a div. I will make this called Hero Dark Background. So here you see how it uh, just kind of lives right there. It pushes this other content to the side. We don't want it to live in the document flow, right? We want it to just live behind it in its own world. So we can just make the position of this absolute. And we'll make this uh, full right here so it takes up the whole section and I'll make the height ADVH just like the hero section so now we've got the other dark background living right on top of this and I can give it its own background image so go down here to backgrounds I'll just pick an image I have here I've got the Mordor background I'm gonna click cover center it's always a safe bet and there's no opacity but if I raise this opacity you'll see here there it is it's living right where we want it to it's a little bright though, so let's just add another background little color overlay. And then I'll just darken the color and make the text pop. So now we have two background images stacked on top of each other. It's really just two divs and the background images are set to those divs. But we don't want this one seen initially, right? So we can just lower the opacity of this. And that way it's technically there on top of it, but it's just hidden. Now let's add some interaction to their toggle switch. So let's click our toggle track. We're gonna click the interaction lightning bolt at the top. I'm going to do a new element trigger on mouse click. And on the first click, we're going to start an animation, a new timed animation. And we will call this uh, set dark theme. Because when you click it, everything is going to turn into the dark theme, right? So first thing we want to happen, let's just move this little toggle switch to the, uh, to the right so they know that something's actually changing. So I'm just going to click move. And I'm going to move it along the x-axis, about 40 pixels. And you'll see how it just switches sides there. So initially, the state is 0, so it's 0% along the x-axis. And then when we change it to 40, it's just moving left and right. Because left and right is x, and the y-axis is up and down. So 40 pixels on the x-axis moves it to the other side. We can make this happen over about 0.2 seconds. And that's going to be the duration for all of our little interactions here. I'm going to change the toggle track background color as well. So make sure we're highlighted on that. And let's go to background color. And when you click this, I'm gonna change it to 3A, 3A, 3A. And now it's dark, you see that? Perfect. So I'll just play this really quick. There we go. Let's just make sure this happens at the same time, 0.2 seconds. And we can group all of this together so that they all happen in the same time. So then we have our hero image, right? We did that. So now we can target our hero image, make sure we have hero dark background selected. And all we have to do is raise the opacity on this, remember? So initially it's set as zero, and then over a 0.2 second duration, I'm just gonna raise it up to 100, and then it'll become the Mordor background that you see there. I'll add it to this grouping so it happens with the rest. Next thing we can do is target the body, because we don't want the white. The whole point of dark background is have a darker background. So background color, I will make this hashtag 202020. Here we go, we got a nice grayer color there. Make this go here, make sure it's at the 0.2 duration. Let's target this quote here as well. Green is a little on theme when we're in light mode, but let's just change the text color when we're on dark mode. I'm gonna make this a nice dark goldenrod color. So it pops out like the gold of the ring, 0.2. Group this up here. Let's target the summary paragraph as well. We're gonna change the text color. It's gonna be a white smoke. I have it already saved in my palettes here. So that becomes white smoke, beautiful. Poster's the same. These pictures are the same. Now we can just target the other things. So the actor name, I'm just gonna add this. It's also gonna be a white smoke. And the character name beneath is gonna be a slightly grayer color. And that is just by the value of AC, AC, AC. There we go. And this is just a CMS, you guys. And here you can see I've got a cast CMS. I have each person. There's a different fields. There's actor name, character name, actor image, character image. So it's just pulling all of those things that I've set. And similarly to this hero section here, I've just got two divs that are stacked on top of each other, absolutely. And they each have background images, one's of the actor, one's of the character. And when you hover over it, the opacity of the character fades to 100. And when you hover off, it fades back to zero. So it reveals the actor behind it. Really simple, but it gives it a nice little hover interaction. All right, let's just go over here and clean all this up. So again, we just wanna make sure it's everything's 0.2 and linked together. So let's save this preview our little thing. And when I click this, wow, look how easy that was. You'll see here it moved over to the right, the background became black, so they know you're in dark mode. And then we've got our darker background, we've got the text that's popping against that. And then when we click it again, nothing happens yet. So we want to make sure we have the other interaction ready. One easy way to do this, on our second click, that's when we're switching back to light mode, right? So let's do a start an animation on second click. 
and I'm going to go to set dark theme. I'm just going to duplicate this, and when I rename this, I'm just going to do set light theme because we're targeting all of the same things, right? So why make more work for yourself and redo it all? Just duplicate what you already had and then reverse all of the values back. So toggle track, background color. This is gonna go back to that light gray. The toggle switch moving, we want that back to zero, not 40, right? Hero dark background, the opacity, that's the Mordor image. We want that back to zero because we wanna reveal the great river back behind it, the body. We change that to gray, but we want to make that that white smoke base color. And the quote, we want to make this back to that forest green color here, dark slate gray, actually it's called. Summary paragraph, of the plot, that one was it's just hashtag 333. Our actor name is also the same thing. It's going to be 333. And our character name is going to be a 666 evil color, <laughs> but just a slightly lighter gray so we can read that on the white. Great, so now we just want to make sure once that's saved, we go back to second click and we actually make sure that's set to set light theme. And when we preview this, we turn it to dark mode. We've got our Mordor, we've got the black background of the toggle. We've got all the readable text right over here. And then when we click the back to light theme, woohoo, reverses right back. We've got the great river image. We've got the darker text, the green, and then the text of the characters and actors is back to black and you can just bounce right back and forth. It's only by changing a few different class names. So simple. So that's all there is to it. I know it may seem like a tedious option if you have a bigger site and there's a lot of different pages, you're changing class name after class name to adjust. Now there are some other ways that you can use behind the scenes, some custom code that can manipulate the CSS styling and your flow process, or you can even add some containers and set parent styling and then have all the children elements just inherit the styling from the parent. That way you're only changing kind of one section, but that can get a little tricky depending on how many colors you want to use, etc. But I found this is the most straightforward way to get it done. So thanks for watching. I was so excited to finally do a Lord of the Rings themed tutorial. As you know, it is one of my favorite all time movies and it was so fun to incorporate Middle Earth with the light and dark theme. So this is the breaking of our fellowship for today, but just keep building, keep designing, and if you ever feel discouraged, just remember that even the smallest person can change the course of the future.